Okay, Experience. now what we're going to look at tonight is relationships. And having first discovered the entities, the second step now is determining what relationships exist between these entities. Because remember, um, we're dealing with the database and uh, the tables. And the, the data in the tables will be related to each other. Data in the entities will be related to each other. The question now is, how is that information related? How is one entity related to the other? How is the data here related to the data over there? And one of the key things to do, one of the key things that you need to do is to find out how the entities are related to each other. Because at the end of the day, we have to be able to model that relationship accurately. Yeah, we need to be able to accurately and properly model the relationship that exists within the, uh, the database. That's why we end up with what is known as the ER diagram. And its entity and the relationships that exist between the entities. That is what the ER stands for, entity relationship diagram. So this particular step here just involves two things. Building what is known as a matrix, and then fill in the matrix with the relationships. Now, what is the matrix? The matrix that I am talking about here is what I refer to as an EE matrix or entity, entity matrix. And the reason it's called an entity, entity matrix is because it's a two by two matrix. And on the heading for the rows and on the heading for the columns, you have a list of your entities. So it's an entity by entity matrix. The, this type of matrix allows you to identify what I call binary and unary relationships. Unary, of course, comes from the word one, and binary, two. So what unary relationships are? Unary relationships are relationships where the entity is related to itself. Uh, an example of that will be if a course uh, is a prerequisite for another course. So th that, really, that entity will be relation related to itself. The majority of relationships will be binary relationships. That is where one entity is related to another entity. So we have two entities now being involved in a relationship. Uh, there are higher order relationships but uh, as far as I see it, these two types of relationships are sufficient for you to be able to uh, answer any query that is asked on your database. So these are, these are sufficient. These are not all, but it's sufficient for you to be able to answer any question uh, that will be asked on your database and we should be able to allow you to get any data that you can have. Now, Getting the relationships is very, very tricky. Now, you have to work very, very closely with the client. And like everything else, we have to go to the client. You have to ask the client, listen, is this how it is supposed to be? Is this true? Is that true? Is, you know, When you build a relationship, you have to go to the client. And you don't take the matrix to the client. They wouldn't understand what you put in front of them. But you will take your list of questions to them. And say, is it true that this is that? You know, as we build the matrix, you see. But you have to go through it one by one with the client and ask them if it's true. If they say yes, no, they will give you a long explanation and description or whatever. The, the point is that you capture the relationship and you capture the relationship correctly. That's the main thing. Right, now, step one, build the matrix. The example I'm going to use tonight is the second case study which deals with the, uh, the employee and the position and the allowances. Now, in order to build the matrix, what the matrix is, the matrix really is a two by two table. Uh, a table with columns and rows. That's basically what it is. And on 
for each row, you will have the name of an entity. And the heading for each column will also have the name of an entity. And where the rows and the columns intersect, that is where you will have your relationship. But this is what the matrix uh, starts off by being. So what you do is you take each entity and you list it as the heading for a column, for a row, and then you take each entity and you list it as the heading for a column. So let's do that. So what I have done is that I have listed each of the entities as a row heading. Next, I need to list each of the entities as a column heading. It is preferable to have it in the same order that you do it here. It's not necessary, but it is really recommended that you do, and later on you'll find out why. So whatever order you use here, use the same order going across there. Okay, so we have the row headings, our entities. We have the column headings, our entities also. And we then now have a little table. And this table here is what we refer to as a matrix. Simple two by two matrix. And the order here is the same as the order at the top there. Now the process, this is step one of the, uh, the, the deriving process. Now this is just building the matrix. The second part now is to fill this in. And you fill this in with relationships. Now whereas previously we had said that uh, entities are nouns, Relationships are verbs. Now, the noun is usually the name of something. The relationship is a verb, meaning to do something. So, in order to fill this in here, what we need to do is to go through each cell and ask ourselves, is the heading here related to the heading there? Or the other way around, is that related to that? and what relationship is there. If you can find a verb to put inside one of these, then a relationship exists. And the verb that you put in there, that is the relationship. Fair enough, let's go. Is employees related to employees? Now remember, you have to put yourself in the context of the problem. You are not designing the database for you, you're designing it for the client. Yes, you have to put yourself in the context of the problem, not whether or not it makes sense to you, but whether or not it makes sense to the client. Let's go. Employees related to employees. Yeah. Yes. Oh. Employees are employees. Verb, relationship. Are. Yes, no. 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 Employees and positions. Yeah. Yes. How? Uh, employee, employee have a position. position. Sorry? Position. They hold positions or fill. Yeah. They fill positions. <laughs> employees and allowances. Yeah. Employees they earn allowances. Yeah. Yeah. We'll leave that out for now. So if you actually look at it closely, this really doesn't be on here. The allowances also and the vehicles also. So question. Mm. Okay. Um, existing two things at the same time. What do you mean? Like if they have it under across some um, employees attached there, mm -hmm. they can put it on your positions as well. Yes, you can have the same verb in two different cells, uh, and they would mean two totally different things. Yes, you can do that. But what you will find with this table is that the same verb will reappear more than once. So we 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 now agree that. Because of the context of the problem, the only thing employees do really is fill positions. So that and that and that, we agree that because of the nature of things, that uh, there's no relationship. Now we're gonna deal with positions. Positions and employees. It's exactly the same thing. Actually, what it is, is a reflection. Later on, you'll see how the two halves are exactly the same. Positions and positions. Oh. Now, positions and allowances. There are two ways that you can actually, there are two ways 
that you can actually look at it. You can say the position is blank allowances or later on when we come down here, we will say allowance blank position. It's the same relationship. It's just that you look at the relationship differently. So the same verb that you use here will be the same verb that you will use down here. So whether it's position, blank, allowances, it's the same thing as allowances, blank, position. It's the same thing. You with me? Yeah. So what's the verb? Position, salary scale, and that one there is more of the salary scale being attached to the position. Because a position will have several salary scales attached to it. And the last one with the vehicle. Assigned, allotted, same thing. Allowance and employee. You can look at the top here. Allowance, employee, and allowance. It will be exactly the same. Allowance and position. It's exactly the same. Allowance, is allowance related to allowance? Yeah. In this case, no. Allowance and salary scale. Yes, no. No. And allowance and vehicle. No. Come down here, you will notice the same thing. Salary scale and employee, employee, salary scale. Exactly the same. Salary scale and position, position, salary scale. So we can write back the same thing. Salary scale and allowance, allowance and salary scale. Same thing here, same thing here. So basically what you're saying is right. I can now take these three and just you notice that it's the same. Yeah? Yeah. So we just have one more vehicles, employees. And the last one there is just goes to assign. Yeah? Let me, let me show you a little bit of magic here. Now, if you look at this table, you notice a pattern, don't you? Yeah. yeah. But you just can't put your finger on it. Or you can you? Yeah. What's the pattern? It's mirrored diagonally. Yes, it is mirrored diagonally. Mm -hmm. Yep. If you actually come down here and you fold it over, you realize that it's a mirror of the other. What this means is that we can either get rid of everything at the bottom here or we can get rid of everything at the top there and we will have exactly the same relationships. You wouldn't lose any information. We cannot delete these, but we can delete everything above that or we can delete everything below. And we will still have the same information. Another one of the beauties of matrices. What I do, I get rid of uh, the top here. So we end up with just the bottom half. So when we look at one, two, three, four, five entities, we end up with one, two, three, four relationships. Positions are related to employees, the fact that employees fill positions, or looking at it another way, positions are filled by employees. Allowances are allocated to positions, or positions are allocated allowances. 
salary scales are attached to positions or positions have salary scales attached to them. Similarly with vehicles. Now what you need to do is to verify with the client that this is right. Mm -hmm. Will it always be like this? Always, always be a mirror image. So before you even fill it in, you can draw your diagonal down and only look at half. But remember, you can, you have to put in the ones involved because they can actually have relationships. I, actually, there is an example in the book with courses where a course, let's say this is course and that is course, a course is a prerequisite for a course. So you can have these what are called unary relationships. So uh, you need to keep these and you delete everything either above or everything below, but not including the diagonal. But it will always be a mirror image. Makes your work easy.